And after that, everyone packs up and they start heading towards the town of Fower. Like Sour. Then on the uh, the horizon and sort of thing, you see it. You see a little village beginning to take form. So the village of Fower is lovely. The merging of homes and landscape has never been happier. The village has a winding path that is little more than a footpath that has been traversed many times over. The village square is an open meadow with little canopies of woven leaves and fallen wood that have been procu- that has been procured and cut into tables. Baskets from woven reeds of different colors, leaves, and grasses are displayed on the table. Um, fresh berry pies waft through the air. You can see a potter with a kindling at work. Uh, she has this gorgeous copper skin and a, a spray of, of red leaves for hair. There the are carpenters at work as like a family. Of, it's, they seem to be pulling in like a fallen, another fallen log and they're putting up the uh, framing of a house over on the side. And there's a baker that comes out of her shop and she has like an outdoor table that she displays her baking process on like this seems to be like a thing that everyone does like they all kind of come to the square and they start doing their crafts like publicly and um you you see uh, merchants barking at their stalls there's a painter at work over in the canopy of a shaded tree there's a group of blue cows Uh, the town is bustling Uh, you see pixies creatures you've never seen before with blue skin white skin long wings of butterflies damselflies skin that's rough like bark you see a long-limbed being with a pig head and spindly arms dragging along a pickaxe uh, covered uh, there's one with a hat that has a a candle on it and the candle wax is dripping down one side you can see this really grumpy looking fellow with a red cap and iron shoes he's just almost hissing in the corner and you just see Faye of all colors and sizes and most of all you see Eladrin um Ellie is just kind of um slack jawed as she's just like kind of looking around and seeing all these Eladrin all these people who look just like her and um, for the very first time, she feels normal. And oh, um, I think, like, and like, not yes. even like triggered by any like emotion. Her her leaves start to like turn like a red, and she starts to kind of just like kind of blend in with the like the rest of the party is like hey just for the occasion eh (laughs) i mean usually this doesn't happen usually it's my emotions but i just i guess feels like it fits your emotions could be resonating with the people around you you're vibing (laughs) <laughs> it's the vibe. The vibe. Vibe check. Okay, vibe. <laughs> and they make up the majority of this town. Um, there's a potter, the potter, and um, the, the male with her. Then there's like a, the painter off in the distance. There's a weaver who's an Eldrin. You actually see a tiefling who is a mason. He works with a carving of stone into um, bricks. Then uh, you see the baker is out and she's just tossing her bread or or you know kneading the dough, giving a demonstration. And you see another Eladrin, you know, an older one. He is working with them by twining some rope together, and it's just. Big, uh, and you also see there's some uh, carpenters at work who are putting up a new house and getting the framework work together. So they're just a big bustling city. 
Ali is going up to anybody that's closest and is it just going to exude super extrovert energy and just going to be like, Hi, what's your name? Uh, what are you working on? I see you like to craft things. I like to craft things too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ellie. I just came into town. We're here with a tree person. But anyway, I see that you're crafting something. Okay. Yeah. So you approached the potter, and uh, she's an Eladrin who's uh, up in the years. And she, as you come over to her, she kind of backs up a little. She doesn't know what to exactly do with all that word vomit coming at her and she was spinning uh, on a potter's wheel a clay pot that she was forming and she was adding designs into it by taking a wooden knife to make leaf patterns in it and you come over and startle her the, the blade goes askew she I'm Mona and who are you? <laughs> Super child, who's your parents? <laughs> not even blinking. Did you get into the sugar cane this morning, Sweepy? <laughs> I was in the middle of working on this, but now here you are. That's really cool. <laughs> well, thank you. I I make a lot of pots, and she you know, goes, turns around, and there's this big, like, rack of just pottery of all kind, shapes and sizes. Some are, like, big urns, some are little pots, some she even made a little couple of teapots, and there's a, a male behind her who is, like, like, stoking the flames of one of the kindlings, and Mona says, that there is my husband, Olin, and that's Patel, Yvonne, and Lear, and these three Eladrin male elves are, uh, like, just attending to the clay before it is made. Um, it has to be processed. And then Mona turns around, gestures. Well, um, have a look around. We got um, Treve, the painter. We got uh, Weaver, uh, Ionyel. Uh, we got uh, our mason, Kyxis, who is uh, the only tiefling around. He's uh, tall and uh, orange. We got um, Baker Cream. I think that didn't write thank well. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank sort of looks indicatively at the kids, like, I'll oh, see. It's nice, huh? Nice people. <laughs> Fun arts and crafts projects. You can make a new goofy wolf thing. <laughs> Why do I feel like this is us, like, inviting the kids to Disney? Like, like, I'll see. You can play on the teacups. Yeah. Go find yourself a stitch doll. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Maki takes his his bag of rocks and he scurries over to the mason and starts to just watch him work with wide yeah. eyes. And slowly he scoots over and scoots over oh. and stares. Oh no. Hops rocks. up right around. <laughs> yeah, like he hops up and then he just dumps out of his rocks and says, I hear, do you like rocks? And the mason's like, uh, yeah, I like rocks. What about you? Do you do you have an interest in becoming a mason? And Maki just goes, Yes! The bag of rocks just clank. <laughs> yeah, just may I present to you my portfolio? <laughs> <laughs> he starts pulling your other rocks and he's like, I like the shiny ones and I like the ones that go click clack when you smack them together. This is my favorite rock. <laughs> <And no. laughs> so the two of them hit it off. You're a man of culture as well. <laughs> <laughs> And you look over and see the shiny. I like them. <laughs> they have be. cool textures. He pulls out a shiny. Yeah. <laughs> Move. He pulls out a shiny one and proudly displays it. There's a thing where he like just itches his leg because just yes, you know yes, because idle child movement. <laughs> Thank you, uh -huh. Nate. Uh huh. And he just keeps throwing rock after rock after rock. Julie comes over and she. She watches the baker at work and sees her knead the dough and flip it over and then knead the dough and flip it over and Chewie says, you get to, and then punch the, the dough. Chewie comes over, you get to punch stuff all day? 
I didn't want to do that. Did you wash your hands? Uh, <laughs> Baker laughs, turns, points at her, press digitation, and she leans back and lights up her pipe and says, Well, I won't turn that ar- that away. Mm-hmm. Really I won't say no. I love it. <laughs> Free child labor. <laughs> what a bargain. Well, your work. <laughs> Yeah, and you can see after that, you see, like, Jinta goes over and is associating with, like, the Weaver and oh. their daughter, and they, the two little girls start to um, compare accessories, and over there you can see uh, Rashid is, is just quietly watching the carpenters at work, uh, Targi approaches the uh, baker and they start conversing and basically from what you can hear that um the kids are are welcome um as far as both of them know but they also know that they need to get permission from the town leader who is a person named marin and they gesture to the pond you see uh a beautiful beautiful creature that is sitting in, um, like, there's a pond. She has opalescent skin, shining white hair. Oh, Kiara's already sitting here in a corn today. Man, come on, this is a lot. <laughs> Long, beautiful eyelashes. She is beautiful, not like the sun or flowers, but like the bursts of childhood imagination or the first heart thrums of pure love. As she sings by the village pond, the water shimmers to her voice, and you swear you can hear a tinkle in response as a quiet duet. Side note, this is the mayor. I can see why she's the mayor. (laughs) Next to her is an Eladrin elf. He is a male. Um, He's the painter. His name's Treve. He has on his hip, like, a variety of unique tools. And he's trying to paint her. But you just see this look of despair and just anguish because he can't quite get it right. Or glitter over it. It's really hard to capture the beauty. It's too deep. Just so three-dimensionally, if not six-dimensionally beautiful. Yeah, she is quite the sight to behold. She has a a wheelchair to sit in, because she has a long tail for swimming, and so on land she needs a wheelchair, and then she's also, like, super preggers. And she looks at the group, and she looks at the children kind of integrating themselves, and she goes, Oh, we found more foundlings. Oh, this is this is wonderful. Oh, we already have several of them in our community. We got Milkaixis and uh, Bowen and so many others. All they need to do is find their place. Has Kian attached to anyone? <laughs> you know, Kian's been a bit aloof. He... You know, has been holding on to his wolf pup. He's been sticking pretty close to baby Moss. And as the other children have been finding interest in, you know, what, uh, you know, what's going on in the village and, you know, f- forming connections, you know, immediately. Um, Kian, you look around, you don't see him and you look about and I just think you, you see him like under a tree. So maybe you want to go and uh, check out check him out see how he's doing Uh, (laughs) so you walk over to uh, his spot under the tree and you know him well enough to know that he's trying to put on like a tough boy act because he like has his wolf and he goes I mean it's just a new place so I don't know what to think about it yet it's looking like it's kind of a nice place though kind of makes you want to stick around I mean I guess it's nice. It's better than, you know, roughing it in the woods all the time. So, I mean, maybe I could, maybe I could just stick around here. Really? And looks like a lot of your friends have started to grow roots here. Have lots of interests. Anything stick out to you? Kian is visibly distressed, and as a child, it's it's fairly obvious to you. He he's holding his wolf plushie, and he has his knees tucked up to him. He's looking pretty much anywhere but you. When you sit next to him, he doesn't shy away though, and he says, "Well, I don't know, maybe a sword smith would be pretty cool, or maybe I could make wolf puppies." Mm. Yeah. He, you watch him again struggle for words as he squirms next to you. And plays with his plushie and... But 
That why isn't that isn't why I'm over here. Everyone else just seems to be happy to be here, but I don't know how to feel because I just don't want stuff to change anymore. Like, what if my friends forget about me? Like, my parents, Roa. I don't want you to go. Well. And she just sort of looks at him and she's just like... If you ever do find yourself on the other side, or if we never escape here, I'll come right back, but... If you ever find yourself on the other side... You can look for me. And... I don't know if she has anything that she could... Keep up. Hold on! <laughs> we make a touching moment. <laughs> I don't have anything for him. Just nothing. We start talking about Boba again. <laughs> Stall for time. Don't tempt me. Um. Okay. Oh, hello, hello. She kind of like looks at him and she's like, she she kind of thinks about it and um, you know braiding, where like you braid a little piece of someone's hair into yours. Um, she sort of like, uh, she sort of like sits down because like he's a little shorter, so she sits and she's like, "I'll tell you what. If you can't find me, if you can't get to the outside and find me, so we can talk, or if we do end up going and so I don't come back, how about this? We stick together in another kind of way." And she's like, "I'll. Oh. All right. So." You see our hair and you see mine? Mm-hmm. And so she sort of like does this little thing where she summons her little blade and she just sort of like cuts a little bit of her hair. And she's like, oh, this hair is a lock. It's to keep someone that is not around closer to you. Even though you can't see them, it's a little bit of like touch and base so you don't forget or you feel a little closer when you have moments where you're not sure if you're scared or if you're feeling lonely if you're just wanting just a little bit of a boost you braid this either into your hair or you wear it as a little bracelet but I get the feeling that you probably want it to be a little closer right? just nods mm -hmm. yeah okay. and so she just sits there she's like do you mind? So like, hold out a piece that you don't mind parting with or if that you want me to braid into. He pulls a, a piece from him the back. And so she sort of just braids hers into his and ties a little end. Aw. She's like, and when your hair grows out and gets too long, you can always tie it at both ends to a bit of card and you can wear it bracelet that you can adjust as you get older and older till eventually you don't feel you need it as much he, he touches it and you know he has like a little padawan <laughs> braid and then you feel his little arms go around you as he hugs you and she just sort of does that thing where she like puts her hand on his back and like hugs him a little it's sort of like the the like bro hug that you tend to do or that she usually does, but it's like mm -hmm. eighteen times more gentle than like small. <laughs> so it's just like small. soft, 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 yeah. small. <laughs> as well, um, I mean, I can't leave Moss now, can I? I mean, someone's got to be looking out for her, so yeah. guess I can stick it out here. <laughs> yeah, it touches it touches the braid a little bit. Yeah. And she sort of just like strains some hair and she's like You did very well on this venture. And you're going to do well on others. Right? Okay. After that you spend a little more time with Kian until he settles down and then you know, you make sure he's okay, and then you go back to the party. And once you regroup with Ellie, Luna, and Kayanthi Deirdre Brayden approaches you. She looks puzzled, like she has a conundrum to solve. She says, Kiara, I've been thinking of a way to get us out here. She sort of gestures generally, you know, as nice as it, as it is, I ought to get home at some point. S some point. 
Granted, I like the option to leave when I please, not that I'm rearing to go immediately. This place is, is rather nice. She kind of turns and looks and, ad, you know, admires the, the just the general beauty, uh, nature of nature around them. Which is, look, I got a mage friend. She's real well learned, read lots of books. Study enough book. Sounds in line with mages. <laughs> I well, he certainly well read, knows about eight languages, can talk magical theory for hours and hours, and he's from the Empire. Um, Ellie apparently has some sort of connection to him, because uh, her spirit friends said, go find Eonamies, and um, turns out the same person. But anyway, anyway, besides the point, um, he might be able to help us out. We just have to be able to contact him somehow, maybe with a magic mirror or, or something. Um, and then we, you know, could possibly have him help us. I know he could probably get us out. We just need to get word to him first, because, I mean, honestly, I got, I got nothing. None of my spells could really get us out of here. And it's she kind of, like, rambles on for a little bit. And, um, yeah, well, I don't know, perhaps it would be best if we utilized you know the local thing they probably will get it easier i mean what i'm trying to say is that it might be easier to just smooth one of the fae that's already here because i mean it's just gonna be easier in the long run because i mean just let's face it I mean, getting 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 in contact with the enemies is a long shot anyhow kiara has this look towards ellie and it's like oh you should tell her about the jailbreak <laughs> well, we do. I mean, we can. It has to be really subtle. <laughs> it's just like cursory look over his shoulder. He's listening. <laughs> I mean, it's a village. <clears throat> no one's really paying attention. There's a bunch of kids. Hola. I mean, I don't think we need to be too secretive or too lawful about a about the Feywild that's all in chaos. That's true. For for all for all they know, we could be baking a cake. <laughs> we could be conspiring to bake a cake. <laughs> <laughs> Just a cake. Um. <clears throat> so, uh, Kiara sort of looks to um. Deirdre and just she's sort of in Abyssal she's like oh you speak Abyssal? Of course I speak Abyssal um <laughs> I'm sorry, sure I want to be without Abyssal so that sounds like a great plan we can get you that we're just going to have to add that into our plan on how we're going to be getting a friend of ours um out of Fair Queen Prison oh well, that's an interesting bit of challenge there. Huh. Um, I haven't gotten that one before. Which, since you are of the studied type, I'm under the impression that you would be a great asset to our endeavors. <laughs> she's saying this all in abyssal, too, so she's just like, oh, Ayo, but we got this plan. <laughs> yeah, she responds in abyssal, uh, so you get this guttural, like, deep language back, and she's like, well, honestly, a lot of my spells are research-based, so they just go about, you know, making things more practical for me, so I could, you know, maybe do some right. illusions for you, or some, um, augmentation mm. of your ability. So we'd be having to get you guys out before our little shindig. Hi, well, I can, I've survived a dragon fight, so I can probably survive whatever thrown at me here, but, um... You know, if we could circumvent that with, um, you know, contacting the outside mm. with, say, a magic mirror, you know, maybe. Do you think a mirror like that would be around here, or? Ugh, no, I should have picked up sending when I could. Mm. But, um, I couldn't say, to be honest, but it's the Feywild. You know, it's, uh, magics here are very common, perhaps, you know. You know people around here have them everywhere mm. and it would have to be a mirror it can't be like an enchanted pond or a reflective surface it would have to be a actual rune enchanted item I, well, right? I mean I suppose um, I could work with any reflective surface but you have to set it up 
I, I could I, use a pond. But, you know, I mean, you gotta put the runes where in the ground where the dirt can be, you know, messed up or must, and then you gotta start over again. It's a little more touchy than object. I, uh, I yeah. All right. Uh, looks kick. back in the direction of where her, where her potential estate was. Yeah, you wouldn't have had something like that. <laughs> <sighs> well, Valio certainly had his trinkets, but I don't think he had uh, a magic mirror. Probably would get you stuck in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would make a fairly good prison. No. <laughs> Want to put him in it? Probably want to trap people, so nah, no, no option there. Um, yeah, probably best if we opt for other options. And then in like in common to everyone else, ideas. <laughs> Just like she knows what she said, she knows what she said. They don't. <laughs> well, Just goes into a different language already. Any ideas for the mirror? For the mirror, <laughs> looks at the blank faces across the room. I mean, if we're invited to the Queen's court, you think the Queen would have a mirror at her establishment that would be to the caliber of what we need? Gosh, what I've been saying. She hopes so if she wants to call herself a queen of anything. If she does, it's gonna be, you know, kept, you know, fairly locked up, probably. She seems the type to use it in the morning to, uh, to brush her hair. Well, I mean, she's, from what I hear, she's plenty vain enough to have a room dedicated to mirrors alone. Well, I could see that Luna's about to pass out, so... Yeah. We might want to find an inn to tuck her into so she could get some sleep. It late, she tired, she's just like... Mm. <laughs> mm, it's very late for her. Right, right. Um. Alright, plan in tomorrow. Aye. Alright, we will end there. Hey. Stay tuned for hilarious side chat. <laughs> you say that, and then the shirt becomes more visible. I was like, ah, I see. He speaks. Because <laughs> you have a shirt that looks like a monster. Or, or. <laughs> Hold. <laughs> Wait, show me the shirt again. Arp. What's Arp. that from? This is from one of the games I worked on, called Everwing. Okay, okay. It reminded me of, I think his name was Eduardo from Foster's Home for Oh, yeah. 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 I saw that, I was like, oh. does, he does. He does look very much like Eduardo. Oh. Yeah. Now I have, for a moment, that little clip where um, Eduardo is saying, I like potatoes, and... Uh, cheese is just screaming, I like chocolate milk! And he just progressively gets more terrified of saying I like potatoes. <laughs> I like chocolate milk. Have you ever I had like chocolate potatoes. milk made from potatoes? No, but potato bread have... pretty bad. Is potato milk really good? Potato well, milk. all I know is I've had chocolate potato milk. I was in Utah, which explains a lot, but <laughs> I got it from my grandpa. I think he had a friend who owns a farm up there and they gave us some potato chocolate milk. I just remember the experience of it, not the taste. Uh, the oh, oh, I was gonna ask if it was good. It's probably like thick like oat it's milk. The chocolate versus the flakes of potato floating around. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Texture, it's like boba, you know? Mm -hmm. It's potato. just like boba. <laughs> potato chip chocolate milk. Boba, boba and the fact that I do not understand why people would put that in a drink, but that's just me. Because tapioca is in pudding, why not it's, put it in something runnier? <laughs> it's like half of gummies in your drink. It's like it's like a toy in your drink. But it's softer than gummy bears that you put in your ice cream. It don't. Well, you it. have to like spit back out because you're not eating that. Because I'm not. I'm eating all of it. I will I eat, eat all of it. it. I'm with Kristen. I hate it. It's just disruptive when I drink. What? Yeah, it's yeah. So I just I just want a drink. I don't want you get yeah. a drink and a snack. I get both I just worlds, want baby. My snacks and drinks separate. So I cuz like, just put it on the side cuz like you're sipping through the straw, you're enjoying the drink, and then it uh, inevitably every time you get like a bunch and then you get stuck in the straw and then you're just like, Ugh. 
So what I you have to do, that. Michael, is you have to get one drink with no boba, and then one drink with not only boba, but egg pudding, the aloe chunks, and then the popping boba, and just make it a circus in one drink, and then one so that she can wash it down. So you got to get two drinks for Tiffany now, so that she understands and also isn't losing out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just like the fact that as soon as Kenna left the call, we weren't on a time crunch anymore. We can talk about boba as much as we like during the session. <laughs> Me hungry. What talkie? <laughs> all right, we're okay. all good. All right. Hello, this is Tiffany, your DM. Thank you so much for listening to Dungeon Damsels. We really appreciate all your support. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. That really helps us out. And if you're interested, we also have a Patreon as well as um, a podcast version of our show. You can find it on Spotify, TuneIn, Podcast, Podbay, Podbean, and pretty much where pod anywhere where podcasts are. <laughs> Thank you again so much, and we hope to hear from you soon.